assalamu alaikum students in last few lectures we have seen the basic structure of c programs uh, what are the different versions that can be used or what, what are the different tools that can be used to build a c program and uh, we have used uh, rather two tools one was the turbo c++ and another was just uh, dev++ it is a version is 5.11 so you can download either two of one of the one among the two so i think dev plus plus is a more appropriate and i think easy tool to use as well as c plus plus is also an easy tool to use you can use any either of the two depending upon your wish in in due course of the time i am going to use this dev plus plus as my developmental tool now let me speak about uh, the basic concepts of C++ plus C and C plus C programming. Uh, as per uh, I'm going to follow your uh, the hierarchy of your uh, syllabi, which shows that the history of the C. The C was initially uh, given a project at uh, L and T. AT and L, uh, AT and T lab Bell Laboratories. Uh, it was uh, the head was uh, Dennis Ritchie and Carnegie Thompson. The basic idea was not to develop its C programming. However, the basic idea was to develop a Linux operating or a Unix operating system. And what they they decided uh, to build a language in which they will develop a particular uh, operating system, and they come up with a language we call at that time we call it as a b language sometimes we call that is a basic language b basic uh, but it doesn't uh, uh, it doesn't go well uh, with the keywords and other things they modified it and later on they come up with a version they call it as c and the c name was given at that time and it is being used in current days as well c programming language is a very robust and very well defined and uh, what we can say it is broadly used but uh, there are several things that we should know what are the other things that are not available within the c while as they are uh, those are available within the other programming language the first thing that we need to know is the portability or platform independence c doesn't uh, C is not known for its portable uh, uh, portability or platform independence while which comes with the portable uh, in uh, platform independence is the java that means we can develop or debug the program anywhere and we don't need to have the same environment in which we have debugged for run while as c programming language uh, is the language uh, in which if we are going to run it or compile it in the on one machine we need uh, to recompile it if we are transferring the same code on the another machine while as in java we doesn't need to recompile our code it will run on the fly because of that jvm available within the java but we don't have such kind of the environment here in c where we don't have like we don't have virtual machine like java or we don't have virtual machine like android operating system where we are dvm dalvik virtual machine but java does support a strong point that's the pointers the pointer the main feature about the about the c language is the pointer which we call as a reference to a variable or address of a variable we are going to see that particular thing in the near future but uh, I'm talking about the what are the basic things that are in C and what are the basic things that are not in C. Uh, there, uh, there is one more thing which are available in Java. Before before Java, the Java uh, sorry before C, uh, C we call that is a modular approach, where we can design our particular things into small small modules. We call that as a function and later on we can call them those particular modules and combine it and integrate it to form a single particular software and these modular approach is also available in other languages as well uh, we have within our c we have a strong 
a concept called pointers. Uh, but within other few languages, the pointers have been either removed or they uh, they have been uh, modified in such a way that uh, it will not be like uh, uh, it will not be called their pointers. It will be in the form of other things. So before starting, this was about the small history that uh, Dan Strachey has given us this particular uh, uh, language, which we call as a C. And his associate was Th Thomas Kernigan. Actually, there was in concept um, we will build an operating system, uh, a new or a fresh, and based on the operating system, they first developed the language we call as a C language. So, it, this was about a simple thing about the history of the operating uh, this uh, C language. C language as of current C language is used in many kind of the uh, uh, operational things uh, like uh, assembly programming etc etc uh, we we say that uh, C is a mother of all the languages uh, which is going which, which are being currently in the market but when we talk about the C language C language we will talk about this C language that uh, this becomes the boosting point of all other uh, programming language when it comes to the market there there become uh, it becomes a boosting thing that uh, we have currently in the market uh, this uh, the second point is the life cycle of this c a life cycle development of the c program each and every program each and every particular software has its life cycle uh, how it will work on when we talk about this c program C program, they are always, or any any other programming language, they are always acts as a, uh, a one point acts as an entry point for a program. What does that mean? An entry point. Entry point means where from our compiler will start executing the program. And in this particular thing, in this particular language, this mean acts as an entry point for our compiler to execute our program that means uh, we sometimes we call c as a procedure language procedure means it comes first second third it comes with a procedure there are three sections uh, rather two sections available within the some books say three some books say two but i'm going to elaborate it we call that as a variable variable declaration and initialization section initialization section that means it's it's particular uh, uh, space is being given that it should be at the first then there exists a clear section see. clear screen screen section and there exists a read statement section each and every program follows this that means there within a particular there exists a variable section there exists a clear screen section there exists a statement section each and every program whether it's a big program or it's a small program every big or small program follows this particular hierarchy let us see what are these three sections. Say, I am talking about a variable, declaring a variable. In the last lecture, I have also uh, shown you how to declare a variable. Say, for example, I am declaring an integer variable, int a. Is it? And after that, I am going to have none of the clear section and I am going to have printf person d, comma a. Is it? Now, what does this is declaration section? Is it this is we call them as a that declaration D -C, declaration section is it? And this is what we call as statement section. Is it now? We have seen this particular program. We have created an integer a and we have 
printed that particular integer. If we are going to run this particular thing, what it will see me? It will see me because we have not saved anything to the uh, uh, variable, so it will become zero. Uh, say for example, we have used 10 execute okay int a equivalent to 10. So execute compile and run. Okay, 10 values here. So this is fine for we people, but if I need after this execution, we need an, another variable, say b. So whatever will be in, uh, whatever will be the variables, we have to declare it here. B equivalent to two uh, character c and float d. And whatever will be the statement, we have to declare within here. The statements would be like this. Whenever we are going to enter within this. It, those will execute first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, and then it will exit. This is the simple uh, uh, life, development life cycle of your C program. That means uh, it is based on the uh, whatever is written first, it's going to execute, or whatever is uh, its procedure first, second step, third step, fourth step, fifth step, it's going on procedure by procedure, one step by another step. Well, this was about the main idea how your program will look and where from your execution will look like uh, will go on the thing the thing is how to get these particular variables to be checked what kind what will be the size of your variable? say for example we are declaring a variable we say that there are print Prim, uh, pre, uh, there are uh, some primary data types there are some secondary data types in primary data type um, in primary data types data types we have uh, we have first one as integer we have second one as uh, float we have third one as character and in the derived data type we have first one as array we have second one as union we have third one as uh, say lists and etc there are num numerous uh, uh, derived data types but the primary data types we are focusing on the primary data primary data types we say that uh, uh, by the general definition it's of two bytes is it uh, we say that it's of four bytes and we say that it's of single byte one byte is it and it depends upon array how much kind of the uh, it depends how much depends upon depends upon size of array is it similar the union depend upon size of uh, union lists depend upon the size of list so let us talk about how we are going to check whether this uh integer is of two bytes or in some case we we told you that in four, uh, 64 bits uh, compiler it's of four bytes is it let us now check well, let us develop it a program which will give us the basic things that it will calculate the size of your array it will calculate the size of your variables so in order to check it what we are going to do let us define a variable say a is it we say that printf person d comma size of a size of is an function which give us the size of that particular variable is it now when we talk about the size of variable we are going to compile okay there should be a semicolon and you should remember that within the c each and every particular statement should end with a semicolon as i have started some uh, statement here i am going to end here i will put semicolon similarly i am going to start here i am going to end here i will put semicolon it depicts the end of that particular statement every time you start a statement you should end your statement with a semicolon 
so i'm going to compile it compile and run okay. it's four as i was talking about that this is my machine is of 64 bit so i'm here as tdgcc 4.9.4 64 bit so if it would have been a 32 bit machine it will obviously come two bytes but i'm using 64 bit so it's in the size of my integer will be four bytes if you people are using into uh, 32 bit machine then size of your size of your integer will be two similarly if we want to check the size of our floating point number what will how much size a floating point variable can be f so i'm going to again print print f person d is it person d double quotes printf double quotes person d comma size of a bracket may f if i am going to compile it compile and run it show me four bytes is it because the size of your particular uh, floating point number is four bit so if i am going to run it so it will show me four bit for four bit for this four bit for integer four bit for floating point now for character similarly character c i am going to print again print f but i am not going to mention here i mention here c so execute compile and run and it will show me 441 because your character will have only single byte. similarly if we have double d and i am going to print size of d compile okay it will show me eight is it now if i am going to use long double dd again i am going to print dd what it is going to show me it's going to show me 16 because long double doubles the size of our double similarly if i am going to use long int long is keyword which is used with the day primitive primary data types say a a we see that size of a a execute compile and execute we say that it's four is it now when we talk about these particular this will give us the size of our particular uh, particular data type we are only mentioning here size of our a that means a is being defined as an integer kindly give us the size of a because it is being given it is being defined as an integer what kind of the data will hold it will hold integer data which is of in my case it's of four bytes and if you are using 32 bit machine it will be at two bytes data hope that you understand the concept of defining the variables and these are the primitive data types that are available within our C group. Let us say, let's take one example. Let us add two numbers. Say, two numbers means, say, we have to take n equivalent to 10 and m equivalent to 20. And then we need to add them. Is it? That means the summation will become 30. So, in order to do that, we need the first variable n. We need the second variable m and we need the third variable where we are going to add these two numbers in order to do that what we need we are going to have n comma m comma you see now n will be equivalent to say 10 is it m will be equivalent to 20 and say sum will be equivalent to zero at the first time there is nothing within the sum so the first step we have declared 
these particular value variables as integer n m and sum and after that we have initialized it n value of n will be equal to 10 value of m will be equal to 20 and value of sum will be equal to uh, 0 at the first now when we talk about this we say that sum will be equivalent to n plus m now what we say we say that get the summation of n and n and m and store it in sum now we have stored the value of summation of n and m now we need to print that for that we are going to use the printf we say that summation of two numbers two numbers kiska n and m are equivalent to are equivalent percent d is it percent d sum so we have taken the summation of two numbers that is n and m where we are going to store it in sum so within sum we have stored the uh, two uh, two particular values n plus m which is being stored in so if we are going to run this particular program what it is going to show me compile first uh, there should be a exception except expected semicolon before return so we have not entered this particular uh, line so compile again so there is no error no warnings is it compile run so summation of two numbers n and m are equivalent to 30 n was 10 m was 20 so summation is equivalent to 30 similarly we can have subtraction so in order to do the subtraction we say that m minus n is it and with subtraction subtraction of two numbers is equal to this one if we are going to compile this okay if we are going to run this uh, subtraction of m and n are 10 number uh, are equal to 10 so it is here m and hope that you understand the concept the basic idea of how to how to write down the program in terms of the c in the next lecture we are going to see few more things about the c but you what you are going to do you are going to have practice about the basic programs uh, like addition subtraction multiplication and division in terms of the c so you are going to see send me a screenshot of all the four programs uh, on editor with the output how your output look like the addition subtraction multiplication division thank you thank you very much